Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, today we are continuing lesson 21 in unit five. We will be talking about um, the prefix re and pronouns, but specifically subject pronouns. So I want to review what a subject is in the parts of a sentence. So let's get started. All right, so like I said, we are going to be learning about the prefix re. I have a feeling that most of you know what this is and how to use it. Um, what does What is a prefix, first of all? A prefix is a letter or a group of letters that we put at the beginning of a word so that it changes the meaning of the word in some way. So the prefix re um, means again, to do again. Like the, the examples here are refill or retell. So if you went to a restaurant and you got a glass of orange juice and you said, could you please refill my glass? It means it was already filled once to refill it means to fi fill it again. So here we have a few examples. Repaint, the family had to repaint their house after a few years. Retell, John was asked to retell his joke because it was so funny, right? So he, they wanted him to tell it again because it was so funny. Remake, Jake's tower was knocked down so he had to remake it. Reread. Molly rereads her AR book so she will understand the story well. Replay. The news replayed the awesome catch by the football player. All right, so that was a very quick run rundown of the prefix re, but I think you all know how to use that. You have a few workbook pages that you'll be doing later, um, including that, and we'll talk about it in our um, group sessions to make sure that you understand it. So next, we are going to be working on pronouns. What is a pronoun? I know that you've done this in Spanish. Um, we also have pronouns in English and you use them all the time. You just not, might not know that that is what they are called. So a pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. So what does that mean? Um, here is the example. I asked them to help me clean our classroom. So although you might not realize that those words that are in purple are taking the place, are pronouns taking the place of a noun, if you think about it, who is I, right? I replaces the name of a person. I asked them. Who are, who, who is, who are we referring to? Them. It's a group of people that have names, right? Um, me, my name is not me, I can't just, but I can use that and you know who I'm talking about. So me takes the place of Miss Jessica to clean our classroom. So instead of listing all of the people um, who belong to that classroom, our means collective, all of the students and myself included, if I were the one writing this. Okay, so why are pronouns so important, right? If we already have a name, why do we need to use them? Why do we need these other little words? You see a few more on the bottom, he, they, I. Well, if I have a name, why do I have to use I or me? Um, and if you have a name, why do I need the word, the pronoun you or your? So I want you to listen to King Grammar. I think that his explanation will make it pretty clear why pronouns are so important. So listen, and we'll be right back. Once upon a time, high on a hilltop, there was a quaint little town. On this special day, the townsfolk were making preparations for a feast in honor of King Grammar, who had traveled many, many miles to visit. Good day, it is I, King Grammar. I have traveled many, many miles to visit you. Yay! Yay! Welcome, King Grammar. My name is Prince Dandy Lions. Prince Dandy Lions is honored that King Grammar has come to visit on King Grammar's noble steed, Traveler. Thank you, Prince Dandy Lions. This feast looks delicious. Before King Grammar eats, let Prince Dandy Lions introduce Prince Dandy Lions' royal chef, Chef Al Fresco. Chef Alfresco has created a feast fit for a king. <laughs> ah, Chef Alfresco prepared many of Chef Alfresco's favorite dishes for King Grammar to enjoy. Chef Alfresco hopes that King Grammar is hungry. <laughs> oh, 
famished. Before King Grammar indulges in Chef Al Fresco's royal feast, let Prince Dandelions introduce you to Prince Dandelions royal players. Crystal Claire, Hugh Morris, Ricochet, and Ted E. Bear. Hugh plays the cello. The cello that Hugh plays is very special to Hugh, because Hugh's cello was given to Hugh for Hugh's birthday. Crystal likes to play Crystal's viola for Crystal's family. Have you good people ever heard of pronouns? <laughs> as wonderful as your nouns are, you could save a lot of words and time using pronouns. You see, pronouns are simply words that you can use in place of a noun. What kind of words? I, he, we, she, us, it, and you. Them, those, they, that, just to name a few. Pronouns are wonderful little words you all can use. Now he can cook his feast, they can play their music, and we can eat our dinner. Ah, a Prince Dandelions thinks Prince Dandelions understands. <clears throat> Rather, I think I understand. Me too. We do too. Yes, yes, you are all getting the hang of it. I think I will have some of this and a little of that. And so, having been introduced to pronouns, Prince Dandy Lyons, Chef Al Fresco, Crystal Claire, Hugh Morris, Rick O'Shea, Ted E. <clears throat> oh, right, pronouns. And so, they all lived happily ever after. All right, so do you think pronouns are important now? Can you imagine if instead of saying, I asked them to help me clean our classroom, if I had to list everybody's names? So they're very important. It is also important, however, that we need to make sure that we use the actual name in the beginning um, before we just start using pronouns so that people know who we're talking about, right? If I just said, if I just walked up to you and I said, oh, he said he can come with us, who's he, right? So sometimes we need, we need to use the proper name first and then we can use the pronouns after that. All right, so um, this week we are only going to talk, be talking about one type of pronoun. There are many types of pronouns. Um, the type of pronoun we are talking about are subject pronouns. So only pronouns that replace a subject. So I want to review very quickly and make sure that you remember what a subject is. So let's review subject and predicate. We did this a long time ago. You've done this in Spanish as well. So first, let's, let's talk about a sentence. A sentence, what makes a sentence a sentence? It is a whole complete thought, okay? So if I just said to you, the tall tree with many branches, that's not a sentence. The tall tree with many branches, what, right? It wouldn't be a complete thought. You're waiting for more. Or played in the wet sand. Okay, played in the wet sand. Who played in the wet sand? What played in the wet sand? Neither of those are complete sentences. So the sentence is the whole thought. The tall tree with many branches fell right onto the road. Now we know what we're talking about. We know what we're talking about and what happened. Little Andy played in the wet sand. Now we know who played in the wet sand and it makes sense. It's a complete thought and a complete sentence. Okay, so a sentence is a whole thought. Like we said, the two main parts are the subject and the predicate. So together they make a whole thought, they make a complete sentence. All right, so the subject of the sentence tells you who or what the sentence is about. Some people call it a naming part, so if you hear that in the future, you know the naming part is, refers to the subject. Who or what is it about? Little Andy played in the wet sand. Who or what is this one about? Little Andy. So he, little Andy is the subject. Now the predicate of the sentence tells what the subject did or does, depends on what tense. And um, so in other schools, they might call it the telling part, okay? The telling part refers to the predicate. 
What does the subject do? Little Andy played in the wet sand. What was the subject? Who, the subject is who or what? Who is little Andy? Little Andy's a subject. So what did he do? He played in the wet sand. That is the predicate. So the subject of a sentence tells you who or what it's about, and the predicate tells you what the subject did. Let's try finding the subject and the predicate of a sentence, shall we? And I highlighted shall. Does anybody know why I highlighted shall? Because it is one of your sight words this week. The whole family listens to the radio pro program every Saturday morning. So what is the subject of this sentence? Who or what are we talking about? I'll give you a minute to think about that. Eh, uh, five seconds. The whole family listens to the radio program every Saturday morning. Say it out loud, who is it about? The whole family is the subject. Now, what does the whole family do? They listen to the radio, radio program every Saturday morning, so that is the predicate. And that, my friends, is a complete sentence. So the reason I wanted to go over that is that um, we are only talking about subject pronouns this week, not any pronoun. So it is a pronoun that replaces a noun that is a subject of the sentence. So here are some personal pronouns, um, personal subject pronouns. I, you, we, they, he, she, it. Okay. So let's try to um, replace these with a pronoun. If I say Mike plants seeds, what subject pronoun should I replace that with? What do you think? Say it out loud. He, right? He plants seeds. Good. Okay. Mom and I like white flowers. What would I replace this with? Now, this is a little tricky. You have to actually read because the picture only shows one person, but you need to read the whole sentence. Mom and I like white flowers. What subject pronoun could I replace mom and I with? Say it out loud. We, we like white flowers. What about the seed grows? What could I replace the seed with? Not I, obviously, not he or she, because it's not a person. So we replace it with it. It grows. Lisa carries the dirt. What subject pronoun can we replace Lisa with? She. Alexis likes to water the seeds. What subject pronoun? She. Dad and Tim dig a big hole. Again, it shows one person, but you need to make sure you're reading and listening. Dad and Tim dig a big hole. If it's two people, what and you yourself or I, I myself am not included, it is they. They dig a big hole. Okay, so next you are going to do some work on your own. You will find this page, it says May 6th, that tells you the date right on the top of your paper. So I want you to rewrite these sentences using the proper subject pronoun. After that, you are going to do workbook pages 82, 88, and 92. And then finally, if you have time, I am going to assign you some ABC Mouse games. Now you can do these throughout the week. If you have time to do them today, don't let it hold you back from doing your other work though, okay? You can do them at the end of the day, um, whenever you have the time to do them, but you can pace yourself and do them throughout the week. These are all about um, pronouns, okay? Enjoy your work, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.